Russ, in the same vein as we've talked a lot about modernization and re-engineering technology to future-proof the business, wonder what your thoughts were around the Microsoft environment. I know near and dear to your heart currently is .NET Core 3.1 Plus and the long-term support provided there. But wonder what recommendations you, you have and thoughts you have around leveraging the cloud, supporting multi-tenancy, and the database structures. Yeah, so you know, a few things kind of come to mind a little bit when I'm thinking about that. I mean, first, as you're looking at multi-tenancy, assuming that you you know haven't already built your application to be supportive of that, there are a lot of good development patterns out there that explain how to do it. Um, it it can be fairly simple if it's a relatively simple application, but it can get complex depending on your specific circumstances. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I find that is important if we're looking at multi-tenancy, or at least that I think is important, is um, the ability to make use of the cloud technologies that allow you to uh, scale as necessary. So it, making use of the elasticity that the cloud offers you, things like um, SQL Server has a concept of elastic pools, which is really nice because then this way you can uh, give a bucket of resources, if you're not familiar with elastic pools, you give a bucket of resources to a group of databases and you, and you basically ask them all to share those resources. And then if any one database really needs a lot of resources right now, but the others are not very busy, well, then those resources are available to that one database. And so it is able to basically stretch and, and scale uh, very briefly. And then it comes back and you're just sharing those resources. So tools like that <clears throat> um, are important to look for in the cloud because they can really make a multi-tenant application much more resilient to the ebb and flow of your cyclical business, potentially. <clears throat> um, you can make use of other tools, so there's other opportunities, so like messaging as well, that's a good opportunity to be able to send if you have a sudden burst of messages that needs to be done and a background process that you know will just pick them off at a certain rate, but if you have, suddenly have a burst, messaging tools are a fantastic opportunity. Um, and even do along with that as your functions is another opportunity to um, be able to say, okay, well, I've had a burst of messages that go into the queue. I now need to be able to scale up this long running process or this, this process that goes in DQ's messages so it can, it can scale as well. So you've got a lot of opportunities and these are just some examples, but um, you know, those, those are a couple of things that I think of off the top of my head. Uh, another thing, as you're making the transition from maybe .NET Core, uh, sorry, .NET to .NET Core, or if you're going from an on-premise to an in-the-cloud architecture, there have been changes in development patterns that have come along over the last few years. That's probably going to be something important to take a look at as well, if this is, this is your opportunity to make some changes. I caution anybody. Uh, from thinking uh, of a lift and shift as, an op as a long-term strategy. Obviously, it's a mechanism that gets you up in the cloud quickly, but the cloud is a different, brings a different set of technologies and different set of challenges as well as advantages to you. And you know, as you move up into that cloud, it's a good time to try and revisit some of those development patterns and make use of the tools that are available to you now and, real and, and start to transition your software because that's going to be what gives you a really good experience in the cloud versus, um, you know, just saying, well, I, you know, I've taken all of the problems that I had on premises and just moved them somewhere else. And, you know, that's, that's something that you, you know, obviously is not going to give anybody a good experience. So there's a lot of different things that you can look at when going to the cloud and, and it's, um, you know, imperative that you take the time to kind of think that through a little bit and not necessarily move things too quickly because the technology is so different and it gives you so much, so much more um, than what you might get on premises. Thank you, Russ. That's great. Appreciate that.